lesson 18, we're going to look at some of the advanced features of 3D. We're going to try and make things that are maybe a bit more complicated, where you can start to add and take away from 3D objects, and trying to look at some of the, uh, the advanced texturing tools that allow you to create uh, much more advanced 3D images uh, where you don't need to have so many complicated polygons. So this will become clear as we start to work through it. Lesson 18, we're going to start looking at some advanced 3D tools. I'm going to talk mainly about the, uh, the Boolean tools. I'm not going to cover every single thing that uh, Wizard we can do, incidentally. There's so many tools up here that we could spend ages, and I'd rather do that through some sort of advanced uh, tips and tricks later on. What I want to show you first of all is, is this Boolean tool. You find it in here, Boolean Operations, Uniting, Intersecting, and Subtracting. Subtracting is the most useful thing. Uh, the reason I'm not going to show you every single thing in here is, you know, there's some, there's some quite cool tools at like filleting and uh, obviously we had a look at extruding already. But I just find that I don't use them very often. The majority of the time I just need to know how to extrude something and cut something away from it. I can create the majority of the objects I need. So I'm going to try and show you by creating a, a house. So there's two different ways of doing this. I'm going to start off by showing you the old fashioned way and I'm going to show you the clever new way. So we're going to create a wall. Uh, I'm going to make it um, 9 by 9 and half a metre thick. Just going to stick that in there. There we go. You see I just popped it up there. So that's, that's it now. So zoom in on it. So we can see it. Um, and we're looking from the back. That's why it's looking all the way around. So let's go to the back view. Let's go to the uh, front view. There we go. Still, it's like it's on the wrong side, but there we go. Um, now, what we want to do is to cut out some windows. So I'm going to put two more uh, walls in there. So I'm going to do one. I'm going to make it interactive. I'm going to make it a bit thicker, like two meters thick, so it's really easy to to push through the other object. So I want one window to be there. You can see in our section view there, it's appearing. Click OK. Oh, change the thickness again. Let's make sure the thickness is two meters. Okay, and I'm actually just going to copy that, Control C, Control V, put it over the next, next to it. Select them both. You see here I've got my two boxes. I'm just going to use my side view here. I'm going to push it all the way back into my object. You see now it's pushed through. So it's almost like a stencil, it's like a like if you ever play Play-Doh while you're doing cookie dough, making gingerbread men. Um, that's your cutter. These are your cutting shapes. I'm going to do one more, which I'm going to do another wall interactive I'm going to position it down here make a door ah it's doing some funny snapping again I'm just going to do it there and drag it down make sure it's two meters thick drag it into the middle and then I'm going to pull it all the way back I'm just going to this time I'm going to make sure the Y axis on the ortho is turned on so it stays where it is I'm just going to drag it on that line now I can see I'm moving my mouse around here and it stays locked which is really handy let's move it back there uh, and make sure that's pushed all the way through. If it's not pushed all the way through, when you cut it out, you just cut out a recess. It's not going to cut all the way, all the way in. Now we can select the object that we want to cut away from. Go to Tools, Boolean Operations, and Subtract Objects. It then asks us to select the object we want to subtract from. So basically, we need to select the object we just had. So I'm going to select this one, and now it's click, ooh, right click, finish to abort. Ah, I've done it wrong. The wrong way around. We've got to click this one next and then right click and finish. And it'll cut it away. Use that two more times. So select an object. The only reason you need to select an object at all is just so it knows where it knows that the tool can handle a Boolean operation. Subtract objects. Select the set of objects to subtract. This time I'm going to select both of these in one go. So I can select two. Right click, finish or subtract. Oh, it's just taken the last one, so let's do it one more time. Select that. Tools, Boolean Operations, Subtract Objects. And right click on that. So I left click on that, right click to subtract. And there you go. We've cut three holes in that house. Uh, we can start to get more complicated with this if, for instance, um, let's say we want to do a, take our spline tool, we could do a sort of a cutaway edge. Let's turn off the stat mode. Let's say we want to have something that's broken. Uh, in fact, actually, I'm not going to use a spline tool, I'm going to use a line tool. We'll have to anyway, because it won't be able to do a complicated spline. So let's say it's a broken building, it's been in the war zone. I'm going to do some broken bricks like this. And you might actually have an image or something you want to use as a reference. It's always recommended. I'm just making this up. Something like that. 
and then I'm going to right click close line this time rather than finish line close it all up tools convert lines into surfaces and then tools extrude surfaces into solids and I'm going to make it nice and deep three meters make sure my oh, y axis turned on you see it actually doesn't show it in a view where y axis isn't selected as I click from my views it's only showing me the author modes that are relative or relevant to that that view so y is already selected drag that back and push it into here so you see now that's made a nice oh, uh, made a nice stencil there pushed in so I'm going to select my house first or a subtract from tools boolean operations subtract objects and hopefully this will work if I select this right click finish subtract oh it failed didn't like that it probably didn't work because I've made it custom so again this is where it's useful to make things in another program I wish I'm going to come to in another lesson but uh, that's ruined that for me a little bit but you can see how he did it with the windows and the doors nothing's ever perfect I'll delete that and do it in 3d max later um, now there's another way you can do this to be fair uh, which would actually make that work much more nicely and you can have a lot more detail to it so we're going to go into Photoshop if you've never used Photoshop before you get to see it now uh, incidentally while the virus is on if you're watching this sort of around about April May time in uh, 2020 and you're suffering from the virus this is free at the moment for students um, they've made it free for everyone to learn from but if not uh, yeah, you, can buy, you can buy it for a month on a lease so I've made a plain uh, square here which is just 1024 pixels by 1024 uh, all these programs like WYSIWYG they, they like to think in binary numbers so your texture square should always be 256 by 256 or 512 by 512 or 1024 by 24 or 2048 by 2048 um, now all I've done here is I've just if I turn on this layer I've just created three white boxes now the, the squares in the background in Photoshop means that there's nothing there. It's not that that is squares, it means it's actually nothing. If I turn on my background, that's how it normally look. That's white, that's, that's got data. So each of these points has an RGB value of 100% or 255, 255, 255. So it makes white. If I turn that off, it's nothing. It's not even like zero, zero, zero. It's not black, it's just there's no data there. That's really important because this is how we create an alpha texture. Um, now this is actually the wrong way around. What I want to have is a completely white um, wall with cut out uh, windows. So I'm just going to go image, oh, I've got to select it first, select that layer, image adjustments and invert. Oh no, wrong way around. I didn't want to do that. I want to select, invert my selection. Mm. Select all of that. How that? This how you do it. Select inverse. No pixel selected. I'm going to make the background black. Oh, I've done it all wrong, haven't I? So I want to make a new layer. I'm going to create a white texture. So I made that white. I'm going to apply that to this layer, and then use my selection tool to select all of these squares. I'm going to use my magic wand tool. You don't need to learn how to use this. And then I'm going to go into this layer and delete. No, all the way around. Undo that. Select inverse delete. Oh, in the right one. And then I'll turn off that layer. There we go. I've got some holes. So I've got a white background and I've got some holes with nothing in them. These will be holes in the 3D model later. So we've got white with holes. So I'm going to save this as a PNG. This is really important. Uh, if you save the JPEG, it will convert those empty spaces into white or black. I think it's black. Um, again, I'm going to grey out my windows here because I don't want you to see what I'm working on. Other projects. I'm going to save this in my JCS folder. And I'm going to save it as a PNG. I'm just going to stick it in the main folder and I'll call it house. And save that. Now if I go back to WYSIWYG, if I select this object, now this is a useful thing to learn in general because we can um, we can apply textures to a model at any point using this, this process. 
you go to appearance and we can change how that object looks now when I'm getting to 3d max later you'll see that actually I quite like to be able to bring in objects that already have textures applied to them but we can oh no we can't do it to this because I've already hang on I can't adjust this one because I've already cut holes in it I need to create a brand new wall same idea I'll put it next to it so you can see it it's gonna be nine meters by nine meters thickness of two meters I'll make it 0.5 click OK stick it next to it because the idea is these are two different ways of making the same thing just going to push it back so it's in line with the other one. There you go. We've got two different versions of our wall there. Just straighten that up. And now this one here, we're going to right click properties and apply a texture to it. Now, I couldn't apply a texture to the other one because it had already been cut about. It didn't know where to place the image. This one, we've got a wall front and wall back. So I'm going to select both of them and I'll go to image source new it's going to ask me to choose a new image source and again I'm going to go to my library I'm going to go to JCS and choose my house that I saved earlier as a PNG and click open now you can see what it's done it's brought it in it's shown where the white areas are and where the missing areas are and because it's a PNG it saves an alpha layer so JPEG would have converted that into black but a PNG and there's other formats that do this, targets and TIFFs and actually Photoshop files as raw files, they do it too, they preserve the alpha layer. But WYSIWYG accepts a PNG. So if you're bringing in a PNG to use the texture anyway, you might find it has an alpha layer that you weren't expecting and that can be that can be quite annoying. I've been working on a project that has a car at the moment and the car had an alpha layer that I hadn't realised. It came into Targa and uh, the whole car was transparent because it was using that alpha layer. So yeah just if something looks transparent just check that so we can ignore everything else here that's for for later on and click OK we want to stretch it we've got an option here to tile it that's a one meter by one meter tile but I'm going to stretch it across the whole thing and click OK and there we go it's done exactly the same thing and it just cut those holes now it's actually applied it to the edges as well which is a bit annoying um, and I'll show you later when we look at 3d models in 3d max how we get rid of that but you can see we've got exactly the same thing uh, out of this program, uh, out of this process. But the difference is, is that this has only got six faces, which is using 12 polygons. This, I've got to think how many polygons it created to cut all these windows out, but should be in the hundreds. Now, if you're doing something complicated like that wall we were talking about, let's go back into Photoshop and have a go, shall we? If I wanted to create my cutout wall, like this, which I failed in doing earlier because it wouldn't let me do something as complicated as this in WYSIWYG. I'm going to click delete, cut out the wall, and also I'm just going to load this up as well. This is quite cool. A little fog texture. Um, I need to use my magic wand tool here, which selects all of my selection area. Go into my fog. I'm going to invert my selection, so I'm selecting the the inverse of my wall. I'll just hit delete on the fog. Oh, it's a small object. I'll have to rasterize that layer. Get rid of that. There you go. Uh, and now I'm going to turn off that layer. So now I've got this sort of funky, smoky look with some cutout bits on it. And I'm going to say this as a PNG. PNG, say that as house. I'm going to call it house fog. And this time I'm going to go to WYSIWYG. I'm just going to swap my texture. So I'm going to right click, go to properties. Make sure you've got the object selected beforehand, obviously. And when it loads up your window this time, select both your front and back. Of course, you could do this separately for, for you know one or the other. When you click on image source, you can see options for all the different textures you've got loaded. But if you want to load a new one, again, you have to click on new. Click on the little arrow. Load up a new texture. It will store them all in your library for this project. So you can come back to it later. House fog. See, the file size is much bigger this time. And now I've got fog with the cutouts. So I'm going to click OK. OK again. And there we go. I've now got my wall with like some crazy fog on it. It could have been a brick texture. If I didn't have, if I had a brick texture, I'd have probably used a brick texture to demonstrate this. But I'm going to drag this over actually so you can you can see the effect of the alpha channel a little bit better. You can see you can actually see through the holes just like you can in reality. Now obviously that stuff around the edges is not ideal. 
Uh, that's just the way WYSIWYG processes uh, objects. If you used um, uh, one of the other tools like the, the riser, it would have given you options for the front, backs and sides. So you could just apply the a black. Let me just demonstrate if I use this. Um, just create a random box. When you go to right click on this, rather than just giving you the option for front and back, it'll also give you left, right, um, top and bottom. So there you go. So if you use this instead, then you can select your front and your back and give them a texture, which has got the alpha channel and then the others, you could just make, um, you can make those just a black, so they're invisible. Or if you had an alpha that has absolutely nothing in it, just a plain Photoshop file with no information at all, it would just go completely transparent. So that's another option. So you can see how clever that is. That's still, you know, in terms of rendering times, it's not using up your polygon budget. Uh, the place where I use this feature the most is for um, cut cloths. If I have a complicated shape that goes all the way over the stage, rather than creating a complicated 3D object, I take the picture in Photoshop, I use that magic wand tool that I was showing you to select things, delete out all of the, um, the gaps in between all the, the painted elements for cloth, delete those, and then bring that image in onto a picture in, in WYSIWYG, and you get this beautiful cut cloth, and the light goes through all the gaps. Um, and it renders really quickly because it's not trying to process light hitting geometry. It just automatically um, copes with the the alpha as seamlessly as it would a normal texture. It's um, it's a very efficient way to, to model. So I'd recommend that process. Uh, if you haven't got access to Photoshop, you can do it, I think, with paint. Um, just make sure that the whole point is that you're deleting out. Uh, so there's no pixels. It's not like there's white and black. It has to be no pixels at all um, in that to create the alpha channel. Um, and you don't have, to, don't have to look at it um, in a, in a you know, special program to, to see the alpha channels. I mean, in Photoshop, you can, if you go into channels, you can actually see there is an alpha channel um, hidden somewhere. It's not actually no, it's not even turned on at the moment, so you don't even need to see it separately. It's just uh, as long as it's saved as a PNG file, it will treat that as an alpha. It will, it will load it up. All right, that's enough of advanced 3D. Uh, we're going to move on to some wizards next. We're going to quickly skip through the next two chapters quite quickly because we've done the big bit now that was a complicated bit and uh, let's move on to the next lesson now